In our last video, we went over how to add fractions together that had the same denominator. We showed that when the denominators are the same, all you have to do is add the numerators together, put it over the same denominator, and then simplify the fraction if needed. But what do you do if you're adding fractions with different denominators? Well, there's a few more steps involved in that process, so let's take one example and go over that now. Let's take the fractions of 3 over 9 plus 1 over 6. Adding fractions are simple when you have the same denominator, but we don't have that here. But can we get them to have the same denominator? Of course we can, and we do that by creating equivalent fractions. We can create equivalent fractions by looking for the least common multiple between the two denominators. Let's start by writing out a few multiples of 9 and 6 to see if we can find one. The multiples of 9 are 9, 18, 27, and multiples of 6 are 6, 12, and 18. Looks like 18 is the least common multiple, so therefore it becomes our new denominator. We need to convert 3 over 9 to an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 18. If we look at the denominator of 9, we would have to multiply it by 2 to equal 18. That means you'd have to multiply the numerator by 2 also, because what you do to the top, you must also do to the bottom. 3 times 2 equals 6. Our first fraction is converted to 6 over 18. For our second fraction, we can convert it to an equivalent fraction of something over 18 by multiplying the denominator of 6 by 3. Since we multiply the denominator by 3, we must also multiply the numerator by 3, and we get an equivalent fraction of 3 over 18. Since both of our fractions are now rewritten into equivalent fractions with the same denominator, we can add our numerators together. 6 plus 3 equals 9 over 18. We can look at that fraction and see that 9 goes into 18, so the fraction of 9 18 can be simplified down to 1 half. So let's talk about what we just did. When adding fractions with different denominators, the steps are as follows. Convert the fractions to equivalent fractions using the least common multiple and make the denominators the same. Add the numerators and simplify if needed. Next example. 2 thirds plus 1 fifth. We have different denominators again, so let's lay out some multiples and figure out what our new equivalent fractions will be. Multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Multiples of 5 are 5, 10, 15, and 20. Our least common multiple is going to be 15, so that becomes our new denominator. Take the first fraction of 2 thirds. We're trying to get a denominator of 15, so 3 times 5 equals 15. Since we multiplied the denominator by 5, we must also multiply the numerator by 5, and we get 10, 10 over 15 as our new equivalent fraction. Let's look at 1 fifth. In order to get our denominator to be 15, we have to multiply our denominator by 3. Since we multiply the denominator by 3, we must also multiply the numerator by 3. 3 times 1 equals 3, so our new equivalent fraction is 3 over 15. Now we can take our newly stated equivalent fractions of 10 over 15 and 3 over 15 and add them together to get 13 over 15. There are no factors that 13 and 15 have in common, so this fraction is in its simplest form. We are done. Our next fractions to add are 1 fourth plus 2 sixths. Again, we don't have the same denominator, so let's start looking at some multiples. Multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16. Multiples of 6 are 6, 12, and 18. Looks like 12 is the one we're going to go with. Let's convert both of these equivalent fractions using the denominator of 12. The denominator in our first fraction of 4 goes into 12 three times, so we multiply our denominator by 3 and we get 3. Our new equivalent fraction is 3 over 12. We convert our next fraction to an equivalent by multiplying the denominator by 2. When we multiply our numerator by 2, we get 4 over 12. We add our numerators together of our both of our equivalent fractions and we get 7 over 12. There are no factors 
that are common in 7 and 12, except for 1, so the fraction is already in its simplest form. Remember, if you're having trouble finding the lowest common multiple or simplifying fractions, I'll drop a link to those videos in the description below, so you can watch those also. Our next example to walk through, 3 fourths plus 1 sixteenth. No common denominators, and we can look at the multiples of 4 and 16, but I can tell you right off the bat that I know that 16 is a multiple of 4. So we can save us some time and just set our fractions to be over the denominator of 16. We convert our first fraction of 3 fourths into some number over 16, and we do that by multiplying 4 times 4 in the denominator. Since we multiply the denominator by 4, we must also multiply the numerator by 4, and we get 3 times 4 equals 12. Our new equivalent fraction is 12 over 16. We don't have to convert our second fraction to anything. It stays the same because the denominator is already 16. We take 12 over 16 plus 1 over 16, and our result is 13 over 16. This fraction is also in its simplest form. Last example, 1 half plus 3 fifths. Let's list out a few multiples of 2 and 5, and we get multiples of 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Multiples of 5 are 5, 10. 10 is our lowest common multiple, and therefore our new denominator. We can convert 1 half to something over 10 by multiplying 2 times 5. Since we multiply the, the denominator by 5, let's multiply the numerator by 5, and we get 5. Our new fraction is 5 over 10. We can convert our second fraction to something over 10 by multiplying the denominator by 2. So then we multiply the numerator by 2, and we get 6 over 10. We now add the numerators together, 5 plus 6, and get a total of 11 over 10. We could also state this as 1 and 1 tenth if we wanted to state it differently. Make sure you work through a few more examples of these to make sure you have the hang of it. Our next video will be adding mixed numbers, and some of the steps we did here today will also be used in that video. For a free worksheet with more examples on adding fractions with different denominators, head on over to my website and click the additional resource page. If you found these examples helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.